Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Human Colony Hukalo TV Saturday webinar. Today we have Kim Louise channeling for us and um, all kinds of good information on the way. Valerie, can you introduce everybody, please? I sure can. Thank you, Dan. Today we have in the group uh, Bianca, Christopher, uh, Mike, Rowie, or Omen, Sam, Sheer, and myself, Valerie. And we would like to welcome everyone today to Kim Louise Channeling. Or Omen, Sam. Can we introduce Kim right now? And we would like to welcome everyone today to Kim Louise Channeling. We seem to have some feedback there. Can we go ahead, Kim? Yeah, that's okay. Ready? Is everyone hearing me okay? Yes. Oh, we seem to have some. <laughs> yes, uh, it's all happening here. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Ready? Is everyone hearing me okay? Yes. Oh, there's lag like oh. again. Oh, we seem to have some. <laughs> Yes, uh, it's all happening here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Kim, do you have a Facebook? Do you have a, um, another page open, like yeah, YouTube like or something like that? She's got a YouTube browser, tablet. Look for a double it's all happening here. <laughs> okay, Kim, do you have a Facebook? Do you have a, um, another page open, like yeah, YouTube like or so I've just muted Kim for now while she um, finds that page. And, um, yeah, so if you, if you want to show Kim some love today, go to the Hugh Colo page um, on Facebook, the group page. So that's groups, facebook.com groups Hugh Colo, and give Kim some love on there and, and join up as well. We want to spread our social presence online, so please join our group. Kim also has the group multiverse channeling as well, so you can go there and um, check out her post directly, and she posts quite regularly there. So if you're interested, please check it out. Are we back, Kim? Yes. My apologies. I'm not exactly sure what happened then. So I'm sorry, everybody. I know we were live. Please forgive us. Uh, <laughs> thank you to Dan and Valerie and Roy for being here to help out, and everybody else has joined. Welcome. Some of you I don't know very well, but I look forward to getting to know you all. Those I do know, I love you all and thank you. Um, Dan, do you have any announcements or Valerie? Not right at the minute, I don't. No? I don't right now. Let's make sure we don't have any feedback and hopefully we can continue with the channeling. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, I'm let's not give hearing it anything. Oh, you're not hearing anything. Ooh, I mean, I'm not hearing any feedback. Ah, good. <laughs> All right, that's a good thing. All righty. Well, I will get going. I'll be off for a bit. Okay. Um, Can and everyone I please mute? All right, I'll see you soon. <clears throat> Greetings. This is Alma Talk. Hello, Alma Talk. Welcome. Welcome in. Hmm, thank you, Dan. Lovely to speak with you. How may I be of assistance? Well, we're wondering um, if you have um, some uh, messages that, uh, or some topics that you'd like to share with the group. Hmm. Yes, there is something that is relevant to the timing that is going on in the multiverse at the moment. I would like you to be aware that it does include the multiverse. However, I'm only going to address your planet and the collective around your planet. I'm going to ask that you also be mindful, however, that what goes on around the planet Earth does affect the multiverse and vice versa. So please, just be mindful of this. Your abilities are far-reaching. Now, Source needs you. 
source needs you. Yes, it is a limitless existence and certainly an energy that you may draw on as often as you like and it is the connection that you use between each other and it is effective. In this way, source is the only constant that actually exists in all incarnate life where spirit is evolving. Source is all powerful and as I said, it is the only constant. Again, source needs you. Why? Source is made of vibration. It fluctuates. The quality, let's talk about the human collective here. The quality that source is able to deliver when you ask or when source is taking care of things for yourselves, it changes, it alters. It is a balancing of the energies. There is ample energy, however, it needs to be balanced. Now, at times you over farm your soils. What happens? You all relate to Gaia very deeply. You all have a love for the planet you live on. You've come to understand the importance of what she provides for you all. And yet, you have an area where you have over farmed your soils. Now, what do you do? You fertilize them. You replace the energy. You heal it can be done also with energy, not necessarily three-dimensional additions. The magnetic fields play a part too. But this is a good example of how humans can alter their existence to heal. Another analogy I'll use, the human heart. The human heart, as all of you would know, is divided into two ventricles. Now, inwards comes blood that needs oxygenation. Outwards goes the oxygenated blood. It works beautifully. It's providing you with a better quality of life because it's infusing that blood with oxygen which you so dearly need. These analogies are very effective in what I wish to discuss with you. Now, also, just as a side mention here, your unconscious minds in your near future are going to be delved into. Now, there is much known about your minds, your brains. Yes, you are aware. You do not use the full capacity of your brains. And yes, you wonder why. It's simply that you are not ready at this point to understand what that would mean. But the unconscious mind, which has received little attention because it's believed that it only works with your bodies and you do not have to create any voluntary movements to maintain your life, apart from perhaps ingesting food. But when you do tap into the unconscious mind, Things will open up amongst your population and your planet in ways that are far beyond you can imagine at this point. This time is coming. I just wanted to mention that. Prepare you all for this. Look out for it. It is on the timeline to happen and very likely that it will occur within your lifetimes. This will be a blessing too for the young who are coming into the planet at this time. Now, let us return back to source. The needs of source. The analogy of the blood in the heart. Source is limitless. As I said, the balance is important. Now, how does source energy get out of balance? It's when you become frivolous with it. It's when you do not have a high vibrational intent. Now, when you ask your source to come to you and connect with the element of source that you walk around with, within you, in all of your incarnations, your lifetimes, your past, your futures. But source is something 
that must be treasured. And at times, it is needed for those of you who carry source around within you to send love back to source. Why? What does this do? It embellishes the quality of the human collective around your planet. It also amplifies it. What comes back? Bliss, healing, love, faith. Yes, the law of attraction, gratitude. But when you reach out to source with the intention of giving rather than taking, you keep the energy cycling ever forward. You keep the evolution, the process, the movement upwards, the ascension idea. If you are sending energy with the intent of purity to the source and collective that remains around your planet, that is all about the humans that live on your planet and the planet itself, one, this is where the power of one becomes incredibly effective because what you send out is amplified and what you receive in return is amplified. So people, please send it back again, continually. Whenever you ask for something from what you call the universe, this is fine, this is the purpose, this is you mastering yourselves and the source within you. So please continue to manifest what it is you want. But if you do amplify your love towards source, if you do gift of your own source of yourself, not only between each other, but also to the unity, the existence of source, the quality that you will receive around your planet will be pure and healing. And you will see things such as the hungry be fed, the wars will cease, Love will become a priority. Labels will be dropped off. Intentions will be good. It is that powerful just for one of you to do it. Let us take 500 of you to do it. It does not have to be in sync with each other. No, do it individually. And as you do it, as you sit quietly with yourself, seek that part of you that is source. This is another reason why I am asking you to do this process. It's for you to become familiar with your own vibration that resides within you. This brings you all kinds of understanding about who you are and how you function within the intangibles. Now that is a whole other deliverance. I will not elaborate on that this day. But for now, I really would like for you to understand how your vibration works. What does it look like? Build yourself a picture, a visual, use your imaginations, whatever it takes for you to be able to encompass and connect to the idea of your element of source that resides within you in the light of gold. Once again, this is twofold, as always. You identify the spiritual part of yourself and you also identify your connection to each other and your connection to source. So please move out into your world, take the time and send with intent, conscious mind here, with intent, your greatness and what you want to see on your planet to source, present it to source, it will come back and miracles will be seen before your eyes. So this is my message, my friends. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Alma Talk. We have a question here. Um, there's a new member who isn't familiar with you, and so could you please explain to our new member who you are, Alma Talk, and where you're from? Yes, yeah, certainly. I am from what I call for reference for people on three-dimensional planets usually a leap away from source. This is where I reside. I do not like the idea of creating hierarchy here, but I do have labels just for the sake of identification. I'm also known as High Priest. I am leader of leaders and I'm counsel to all amongst the multiverse. That is my title. 
but it is not necessary to know that to be able to share equally, for we are all equal. We are all connected to source. I am here to deliver messages to all of the multiverse. Yes, this is my purpose. However, when I interact such as this, or if I am interacting one-on-one, -on -one, this is very greatly appreciated. And my deliverance to you will be individual and the best that it may be. So yes, I am simply an equal. But I reside in source and I have never actually incarnated. Does that answer the question? Yes, thank you so much. And now I have a question from Christine. Yes. Okay. And she would like to ask, first, first she says, greetings and blessings. I would like to ask questions relating to my overall health. The first mm -hmm. question is, are my chakras clear? The second is, can I bring my blood pressure down without drugs since all drugs cause side effects to and other problems? Mm. The third it's is, can mm. I shrink the cancer myself without the drugs that cause harmful side effects? Yes. This is truly a test that's on your planet at this time. This disease, cancer, it is rampant. It actually civilizes anger. And what is anger? People produce anger when they are not receiving what it is they want. My friend, I bless you. Thank you. I thank you for coming forward. I understand your turmoil. Now, yes. The answer is yes. You may work towards healing yourself, most definitely. But there is something else to consider. Every incarnate being on this planet and others comes in with agreements. There are agreements that need to be completed. And many great spirits, possibly such as yourself, choose to come into this planet to experience an illness such as this because it is part of your contract. It is part of what you're here to learn. Now, which way this goes? is up to you. And yes, your sciences, they are very much left wanting when it comes to this disease. For you to be able to heal yourself, it will take a large leap of faith, trust in yourself in a time when you are feeling fear. This is difficult. And I would actually ask you to seek out an energetic healer as well to support you on this. Something along the lines of Reiki. May I ask, whereabouts is the cancer? Um, I'm not sure I'm not as she's, sure. Not, she's not on here on today. Here today. Yes. Could you repeat the first question, please? Are my chakras, Are my chakras clear? clear? Yes, no. No, they're not. And this is another reason why the Reiki would be imperative at this point in time. If nothing else, the Reiki will bring her relief from side effects. And she does not have to proceed with your traditional treatments. No, she can choose not to. But it is a very personal choice. It would not be correct of me to advise her any further than I am because the variables here are hers and hers alone. Yes, the answer is her chakras do need balancing and I can organize for that to happen. If she would be willing to present herself to Guru Dan who joins us here, then we may work and do some healing on her. If she is willing, it is necessary, she must be willing and give permission. This is true of anybody who receives energetic healing. There is no deliberate imposition into anybody's auric field. So I wish her well and I bless her for an easy journey, whatever it is it may be. Her destination is, yes, in her hands and, yes, how she journeys through it is her choice. But this is something, as I said, it is very personal. 
if she would like to have a one on one conversation at a later date. Yes, I would be more than happy to do so. But this is not public deliverance, so it is not appropriate to take this further. Thank you, Alma Talk. And just for everyone listening, we would like to say please consult your doctor and please make your own decisions on this as we do not claim to be physicians. We thank you very much. And now Alma Talk, I have another question for you if you don't mind. This one's from oh. myself. Oh, yes. Okay, when we were talking about ascension and our vibration, and how we need to envision that. Um, during meditation, um, I must say that I feel a spinning in my head. Is this like a vortex or a vibration? Yes, it is a vibration. Do you have a color? Oh yes, it is the violet, like purple pink. <laughs> yes, my friend. You're moving into the realm of psychic abilities. So when oh, you are feeling yeah. and experiencing this, yes, you are having a psychic experience. It's enhancing your ability to actually read remotely. And if you continue to do this, it will become something that you will just do subconsciously. It will become natural. And it will be a conduit for you to reach out to wherever it is your psychic abilities wish to take you at that point. Also, as you work with the purple light, particularly in this area, this is very deliberate and it is lovely, I congratulate you. You will begin to receive messages. Not only may you send them, it will work both ways for you. There are those who only receive and there are some who can or cannot send. You will be able to do both because you understand it is possible. So please look out as you experience this more and more. Look out for what defines the images you are receiving. You will find there are patterns, there are constants, and the variables will be minimal. The different ideas of pictures that you may view upon in your mind, they will form a pattern. And it will be as if there is a kind of alphabet you will experience. But it will be as you would see one of your photographs, something relevant to you in your past and you will be able to decode this experience. The decoding will take time. There is no other way for humans to understand that immediately. Psychic clarity is very rare to be words. It is generally a picture that you would see. So please work on that, Valerie. It's it's wonderful. Continue with it. It is opening you up to other ideas of the intangible. So congratulations and please move forward. May others please hear this also. It is something you all may achieve with this practice. Thank you so much. Now You're we have welcome. a member here who has some questions. Yes. Cher, can you speak? Ah. Hello, Almatok. How are you, my friend? Sir, I'm well. How are you? Uh, I'm doing wonderful. Uh, I do have a couple of questions for you. Hard ones. Yes. <laughs> the first one is about what many religions refer to as the Messiah. Like, you have Islam, people referring as Muhammad as the Messiah that is going to come. In Christianity, it's going to be the rebirth of Jesus. In Judaism, it's going to be an unknown Messiah. But many of those religions are pointing out a certain figure that is going to come and save us. Can you have, um, give us something like clear things up? Yes, yes, certainly. This is partially an expectation that has been created by humanity. And obviously, yes, your greatest book is your Bibles. And each of them, of your religions, they vary. Now, there is truth in all of them. And there is untruth in all of them as well. There will be what you call a Messiah who comes. But they will not come as predicted of any, in any of your great books. Of religion. It is going to be an arrival 
it will be subdued and it will be something that will slowly change and evolve and it will be in retrospect that this being will be understood to be the Messiah. There will be no mass celebrations, there will be no mass hysteria. The idea is, is that this being will come into this planet and they will lead by example. This particular person will become noticed because they are broaching areas on the planet with answers, with abilities to make a difference. Just as I spoke with you earlier, it is relevant, intent. This being's intent will be pure and this will be noted by many on the planet. They will not be identified as the Messiah as all the books do predict, typically. No. It will be one that comes through just like all of you have and it will take a lifetime for you to realize that this actually was the Messiah. Now, I also would like to share with you, Sharon, as you move forward in your history timeline of your planet, there will be a time of amalgamation. All of the great religions will come together. They will then look at all the great books of direction, all the great stories, the theories, and they will come to understand where there is a constant between all of them. And out of that, will come one single particular, it will say book, however, it will not literally be a book, it will be a belief system. And it will unify the entire planet. The populace will come as one. What will happen then? As I spoke earlier, human collective, vibration will rise, so will the planet. One thing that has been prophesied is the miracles. This is a constant through all the great books. There will be miracles along the way. Does that answer your question? Yes. And I was wondering if you can tell us, like, you know, how many uh, lifetime it's going to happen, or is it going to be only one, or is it going to be a couple of them? So this, this depends very much on where humanity is at when this happens. Now what I mean by that is the evolutionary process of humanity and the human collective. Now we're talking about a Messiah here. One individual who's going to come into your planet, change your planet and change others. So your mindsets, your belief systems need to understand that this being is going to have an effect on your solar system, on your galaxy and galaxies beyond. Now once you identify that, you will come to understand who this will be. Your question is very wise. It may be necessary for anything up to six at this point to arrive likely simultaneously, if need be. It comes down to the decisions that are going on amongst your wars in your wealthy countries at this point. These will settle, yes. So the timing is going to be very much when humanity is ready for this Messiah to come also. The Messiah will not wait for the plan to be perfect before they get there. No. They understand that part of their experience is to bring you to a greater part of being who you are in a belief system. So yes, there would potentially be up to six who may arrive on the planet almost simultaneously. And then even at that point there may be one who is exposing themselves in one particular part of your planet that does appear to be elevated and being recognized. And this is the one that will be supported to move forward. Something else I would like to explain, Shirt. Whenever there is a requirement on this planet or any other where there is incarnate mass life, it can be necessary to actually allow up to one dozen, as you would call, yes, one dozen, on one planet 
that can facilitate any prophecy that is actually meant to be. And one may be the one that becomes recognized and then this is the one that will be supported by source itself to move your planet to places where it has not yet been. Always, always, spirit covers all options, especially when something as important as this occurs. Taking into account that all beings have free will when they arrive, incarnate on a planet, there is always variables. Perhaps one or two of these who are born into the planet, perhaps they may lose their way. That is fine for spirit has covered all options. They know that within a certain time period, the space-time continuum, that these events will occur. So there is always more than one. Does that answer your question? Yes. And another question is about how people uh, perceive this density because they hear a lot of talks about people saying we are the fifth density, we are rising to the sixth density, and I was wondering like how how exactly do they make those calculations or based on what they say those things? Like can you maybe also clear some of those things up? This too is all about labels. It's about labels and it's about perception. Spirituality source a human in its wonderful greatness. Their belief systems can create all kinds of magic. Now what one experiences as you call let's say a sixth dimensional experience, this is a personal experience for them. Only they know what it meant to them. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Only they know what it meant to them. It is when you move up to the dimensions and you are getting up to fifth and sixth, it is an existence that is difficult to explain. It is something that you feel. As you move through the dimensions, you remove a layer of mass and you add a layer of vibrational energy. So mass becomes less. You become more of a vibrating soul. So as you are in perhaps a sixth dimensional experience, it's only you who has felt it and has defined it in that way. It's a variable show. And it's a label and it's a perception. Let me put it to you another way. If you feel you have had a very strong experience, a very clear experience, where you have vibrated at a much wider range of frequency and you have lifted yourself up and your brain, your brain, your psyche tells you this was an experience of you moving through higher dimensions. After the experience, this is what you will share with others. However, how, and I will ask you to, to attempt to do this, how would you communicate that experience to another human? It will be difficult. So it is a very personal idea and not necessary to be labelled. If you have an experience that is that powerful and that deep, then that's what it is. It doesn't need to be labelled. It doesn't need to be given a name. It is possible, yes. Does that answer your question? <clears throat> yes. And third question. Last question, I promise. Um, do you have any messages for me or something? Sure. Always. My friend, I'm going to bring you back to your channeling again. Are okay. you progressing? Are you progressing? Well, I did have um, a current dream. I had uh, two dreams a couple of days ago. Um, when my brother had um, some sort of a dispute with his producer and something like that and it went off uh, out of hand and I kind of had those dreams and that's what happened. So I do know 
that there was something behind it. So I guess something in the psychic area uh, is starting yeah. to progress. And every now and then I see like some sort of a silvery spot, like somewhere and it disappears as I move my gaze and stuff like that. So basically, yeah, things do go along. I'm excited. So the reason I ask you about the channeling now, what you're describing there, it's actually beings who are becoming familiar with you and your brother. You are also going to be able to display your channeling in such a way that it will be, it will have a large impact. Because of the part of the world that you live in, that is partially the reason. But you will, once you step out and you begin your channeling, you will create a following very quickly. I want you to really grasp that, Cher. I want you to understand that. You can make a large difference to this planet. Let me bring you back again to the intent that you send to Source. You are one who is already working on your own ascension. You do not come from a place of ego. You come from a place of love. This is what makes you ready to move forward with your channeling. I want to encourage you. The beings are there. It is fine if it is not a priority. Your three-dimensional lives are always a priority. That's why you are here. But when you do have these spiritual experiences and you can allow yourself some time to make some connections, I really want to encourage you, Sure, even if you start out as simply doing, as you said, psychic kind of communications, they will move on to mediumship. You are already an empath. You are a sensitive. But you do have the ability to be a very effective channeler. Also, sure, your tone of voice, my friend, the frequency of the tone of your voice is one of your greatest assets. Do you understand that? My tone of voice. Okay. And can you expand on that? Yes. It, the way in which it vibrates. That is very distinct. It is distinct for all of you on the planet. However, your voice vibrates at a certain frequency that allows you to connect with beings of the same frequency. And you have a depth to your voice. You have a strength in your voice. It is powerful yet humble. It is the perfect mix. What are you going to attract? You are going to attract beings of the same stature. And they will deliver through you. And it will be absolutely perfect and appropriate for the clients and the audience that you deliver to. So that is how I would explain the vibration and frequency of your voice. It will coincide with the beings that come to you to have their words spoken. Okay, wow. <laughs> sure, all is well. Always. Yeah. Are you finished, Sure. Uh, yes, I am. Um, yeah, I am. Thank you very much for my talk and much love. You're welcome, Chef. Okay, Omar, would you like to go next? Or Omran, I'm sorry. Thank you, Valerie, it's okay. Um, greetings, Omar Talk. I'm a new member here. Um, it's nice to meet you. My name is Omran. Um, my question is regarding um, my out of body experiences I have. Last week, I had I came out of my body four to five times um, in in an hour, um, and everything felt different this time. It was fun. It was more fun. It was it felt good, but uh, strange things happened. Um, I was I was uh, somewhere where I met three beings. It was three boys um, around twelve nine years old and I talked with them and they said they were from Andromeda I don't know if they joked with me or if it really were they were very human like mm -hmm. and and they became kind of friends with me and they came back to earth with me and in my room 
um, who were this these beings and why when when I come out of my body do I shift realities or what, what is happening because I am feeling like uh, I'm shifting realities and mm. I'm in this re reality and then I'm in another one and another one and then I come back and I go and yeah I it would be if you could tell me more about this what is happening yes you are having happy travels my friend congratulations <laughs> thank you is absolutely so much aligned for the humankind it is perfect travel for them I'm going to even say to you let's compare to the automobiles you you drive you use look at the accidents look at the way some of you perish there's many things that exist on your planet that are not necessarily perfect for humans but astral travel is one of those things that is perfect for humans it is something that is worthy of attention and attempting and working on until you achieve now astral traveling it is wonderful the humans they leave their body wherever they go they can do it where time does not exist you can go wherever you want, wherever you like, whatever you see. It does not have to be a movement through dimension. It can simply be a travel through space. You might end up in galaxies far away and in a second you may be back in your body. It is something that is wonderful and you can practice with another and consult with each other before you make the attempt to do it and then go ahead attempt the process and then consult with each other afterwards. Now this is ideal if you're working towards moving to astrally to a specific place. Let us say to visit with one on Andromeda or one on the planet Earth. Now these children, these young boys, yes, they do have much to do with Andromeda but they are actually residing on Earth. Their physical existence is on earth. This is why they gave you, they presented to you the way that they did. They gave you ages, they gave you names, they came back to your bedroom. But they're being playful. They are harmless. They're wonderful little beings that are having much fun. They do have a relationship with Andromeda. Next time, my friend, ask them to take you there. Meet with them and have fun with this. It's wonderful. Well done. Thank you. Thank you for that. Well, I played a lot with them when, when they came, came back, but I I didn't know who they were, so yeah. And the, my second question is, uh, it was the same night and I was, I came out again and I and then I was on, on above an uh, ocean, the ocean. It, it felt like a planet like Earth. And I felt like it was another body I was in. It was like it had wings. I I felt like I felt wings, and then the music came. It was like music of angels. God or angels. Mm -hmm. What what was going on? What 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 was these things? Because it felt very therapeutic. It was it felt like being in heaven. That yes, that was an angelic experience. Yes, that that has all the indicators that this is an experience to do with the angelic realm. When you feel that you are lightened, as you said, you heard music, you felt wings, yes, all the signs are there. This was an angelic experience. Now, also, in this instance, my friend, you have spent time in spirit and you have actually taken on responsibility in spirit to also allow others to incarnate in the spirit world. There are not many who understand that evolution continues even in spirit. So there are, it is necessary for beings such as angels and the like to assist the evolution in spirit as well. Now, they may stay in spirit as long as they choose. This is the case for you all. 
You all are the masters of your own destiny. You all have free will. In this particular instance, you are having a memory of an experience you had in spirit. My friend, you did work with the angels when you were in spirit. This also shines the light on the idea that you are so freely able to astral travel. You have this gift for a reason and please, I would like you to start journaling these experiences, the dates particularly. I'd like you to start journaling the dates. There will be a pattern that will involve and there will be a message in that for you. This will be part of the evolution of what you've come here to do because you've brought these memories through with you. And that's important. So this will have something to do with what it is you choose for your future. Please always hold on to that angelic realm experience. And if you can continue to gain more, please do. And understand that it's you connecting with an existence that you once existed upon. Is that helpful? Yes, thank you. Thank you for that. It is, it is. I am actually beginning to connect with, with all these beings. Today I was, I was drawing a, a being um, in, in a way, in a way. I, I was drawing it. I don't know if I'm drawing it correctly, but, but it, it felt like um, he was with me. And, and then suddenly my, my, there, were, there were pressure on my crown chakra and it, it felt like energies were in my head. And it, it, it kind of felt heavy as I was drawing this being. Um, what was going on? Were I really drawing a being or were it just my own mind? The key here is the heaviness. That you were feeling the heaviness. That makes the difference. Heaviness in this situation with regard to you and this experience is an indicator of mass. You are used to being of an existence of light, of spirit. So there is no gravity. Gravity does not exist. So when you are feeling this heaviness, it's an indicator that it is something that is going on that is very earthly and very human. If this were to happen in an aspect where you were outside of your body, it would be a completely different communication. But this was much more earthly, this experience. Whenever you feel that heaviness and you recognise that heaviness, because you do have a point of reference. So the heaviness experience, know in the future that this is a three-dimensional experience, not necessarily a spiritual one. Does it answer the question? Yes, it does. It does somehow. Yeah, thank you for that. Well, who was he? Uh, is there? So it was not a being I, I was interacting with. I may only tell you this much. Because it's something that you will work out for yourself. Uh, yeah. It, yes, it is a spirit that you are very closely connected to. Yes. I don't, okay. want, to, I don't want to mix you up here. My apologies. I don't want to confuse yes, yes. you. No, it's okay. It's okay. Yes. Well, well, that that was it. Um, I will uh, pass the mic on to another one. Thank you for for the the answers. It helped a lot. You're very welcome. Much love, my friend. Much love. Okay, we have another member, Christopher now. Are you ready? Thanks, Valerie. Um, hello, I'm Talk Greetings. Christopher here. Hello, Chris. How are you? Very well. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a question here. Um, I'm a talk. Um, going to ask you. Um, it's uh, how deeply am I connected to my heart? Yes. Is that uh, the question? Yeah. And what should I be focusing on? And am I doing enough? Ah, with regard to your heart. Yeah, please. Are we talking energetically? Yeah. Energetically and spiritually. Yes. Why do you feel troubled by this, Chris? I see no trouble here. Why do you feel troubled? Um, I don't feel that there is any trouble at the moment. I just want to make sure I'm going in the right direction. Yes, yes. Yes, I understand. 
Chris, please, trust yourself more than you do. It is absolutely okay to follow your heart. There is one key, and that is to maintain your integrity. That is important. But you must always follow your heart. And consider the hearts of others. And this is where being kind and being gentle to yourself and to those that you love is paramount. When you are dealing with heart energy, it is necessary to be sensitive. And you are very sensitive. I can see this in your vibration. So please trust yourself. You will guide yourself well. You also have guides working with you very well. So the only variable here is your integrity. And you have much of that. You will be fine, Chris. Believe in yourself. Thank you. You're welcome. I passed away. Thanks. Okay. We have a question from a member that just had to pop out, Bianca. Hmm. And she says, do you have any advice about a trip that I'm taking soon? Yes. Is that it? Was there any more? Yes, there's more. And then she would like to know about the Anunnaki around her and then mm -hmm. if there's any other messages. Yes. The Anunnaki around her. I would like her to consider this. What is her definition of the Anunnaki? Again, it is a label. So the questions that you could ask about referencing the Anunnaki actually is confined to those who believe in the idea of the Anunnaki. It is not a question that spiritually would always be addressed. This is part of her belief system, this is part of her journey. So she has chosen to come to this idea and put these labels on this experience because this is part of her building her own belief system that will move her through her journey in the direction that she needs to go. My friends, the Anunnaki definitely have a place on your planet. Referencing it, yes, but it is a human created idea. This is something that I have shared very often. These concepts are very often created by humanity. So this raises the question then, is this truly a spiritual idea or a human made one that serves a purpose of a belief system, not unlike your Bibles? So I would say to her, please embrace the idea of the Adonati that she feels around her if that serves her purpose. She doesn't need it. But if she wants it, that's fine. She understands what the Anunnaki is all about. She knows where this is going to take her. So I do not need to address this further. If she wishes, again, this is a personal issue. If she wishes to discuss this one-on-one, -on -one, I would be happy to do so. Could you elaborate on the first question, please, the trip? Um, she's no longer in the room, so I'm not sure. Yes. I believe she said there was a trip that she had coming yes, up. Yes, there is a trip coming A trip soon. to Pennsylvania. Yes. Mm -hmm. To Pennsylvania. Yes. Is she concerned? There's no reason to be concerned. Oh, that's perfect. Hmm. There's no reason. Well, thank you so much, Shama Talk. You're welcome. Okay. And now we have a question from Wanda. Yes. And she says, do I know you at this time? <laughs> yes, Wanda and I have crossed paths, as you would say, yes. Okay. She says, I'm new also, and I appreciate mm -hmm. your message. The source seems very clear, 
can I be in tune with the universe to help others at this time? Oh, most definitely. Yes. Her vibration is very gentle. She's wonderful. She is a perfect being. I'll bring you back again to my first deliverance. If she simply is to offer up her heart energy, she can change the planet. She is genteel, kind and giving. If she gives of herself in source in this way, then she will also give to all of those on the planet. And this is her will, this is her wish. Yes, bless her. Bless her, Wanda. Thank you. You are very much connected to Source. Well, that's wonderful news. Congratulations to you, Wanda. That's a great message. Yeah. All right, Mike, are you ready to ask your question? Can you speak, Mike? He must have stepped away. Why don't you go ahead then, Dan? Well, Mike is unmuted, but his audio is not working. Is it going to oh. fix itself? or Let's come back to Mike. Yeah, we'll come back to you. All right, Mike, we'll come back to you. Oh, hello, Alma Talk. I have a couple of questions from several different people. Yes, Dan. Let me... Um, Let's start with uh, John Lee. John Lee asks, Alma Talk, are we not, each of us, instrumental in bringing this idea of oneness to the fore now? Also, uh, are, are you able to comment on Tawa, which is T-A-W-A, -A, and the Circle of 52, where there's some kind of message that she's received from this Tawa group? Anyway, so she wants to know about oneness and this uh, this group. Yes. Can we split these questions into two, please? Sure. Yeah. Just the idea of uh, bringing the idea of oneness uh, to the fore now. Yes. And that all on the planet are part of this, yes? Is that the question? I believe so. It's, it's kind of interesting. So she's wanting to know if each of us are instrumental in bringing the idea of oneness to, to the now, yes. basically. Yes. We're all responsible for that, that idea. Yes, absolutely. Yes. She has that so accurate. Yes, please reinforce that. And I want to reinforce that to everybody who hears this. Yes. Now, the second idea again, Dan. Could you please repeat that? I need the name. Yeah, the... Tawa and the Circle of 52, are, if you're able to comment on Tawa and the Circle of 52, and her clarification on this is, uh, a spiritual entity formerly incarnated as a Blackfeet Indian and one who she's evidently been uh, within cycles of reincarnation with, uh, she's been told that she's also one of these group of 52 that was verified by this Tawa being uh, as being accurate information that she's received and so she's wondering if you could verify also this information and if there's anything else that you can add to it basically. Yes, I can verify her connection to the concept. Now the numbers are important here. There are 52 weeks in your years that they're significant. She cycles weekly. Now the name of the Tawa, this is something I may not elaborate on at this point. Again, it's a public deliverance. It is a personal, a personal perception and without a one-on-one -on -one communication it would not be fair to address that, but yes. The 52, the number of 52 is very relevant to her. I would like to ask her if she could journal something, choose one day out of each of her weeks, perhaps a Wednesday, and journal about her week and could she please do it for one year. She will receive clarity as she does so. It does not necessarily have to be your pencil to paper. She may use one of your computers or such, a recording. 
But what will occur is a pattern that she will find very enlightening about herself and her own journey. That's the most that I may share with you at this point. Okay, wonderful. She uh, says that she's received all that information and she's understood. Um, very good. I'd like to move on to the next question. We have a question from Michael who wants to know what is the nature of time from your perspective? What, what is your um, idea of time? Mm -hmm. Well, time in itself, from where I reside, it does not exist, for there is no need. Movement is not required. Time on earth, it is actually a gift to each of you. It means that you can do more effective learning because you have time to process it. Now, in other dimensions where time doesn't exist, what does exist is timing. So they do not watch clocks as such, but they, experiencing, they experience things sequentially. It is still happening in a sequence, but it is not watched by a clock. And much can be called upon and created, and even a new existence formed in what you would call an instant. But this is normal at this dimension. This is where you get to the idea of the instant creation of the thought. There is no time needed. When you are talking about an existence that is far beyond where you reside at this point where time does exist. The difference is where one is timing and sequential, the other is, as in your case, the time of your clocks, the rotation of your moon and your sun. Does that answer the question? I believe that that will suffice quite nicely. Thank you, Alma Talk. Um, uh, just a couple of things. Uh, Jana Lee sends uh, her thanks and gratitude for uh, your answer. Um, our friend, member uh, Michelle, sends uh, her love and appreciation for you that she has missed you and um, yeah. would like to visit sometime soon. Um, that would be lovely. Please tell her I would enjoy speaking with her also. I believe that she is listening even though she is not present. Um, okay. <clears throat> Christine and Mike um, still have their questions, but I'm going to... Mike, are you um, back up to speed with your technology? Not hearing anything. You're unmuting, but we're still not hearing anything, which is odd because we tested this before the webinar started. And it should be working. All right, maybe Mike can type his question on the side. And Christine is here now, so uh, she can talk... Um, and ask her question. She has a question about her chakra. So here you go. Greetings, Amatak. Yes, hello. Um, I'd like to know if um, part of this lesson is for me to learn to clean my chakras or to have faith in that I can uh, take care of myself. Yes. Yes. yes, it is. Your own abilities. Sometimes it can take what you might call a crisis situation for you to actually learn what it is you are capable of. There are moments where evolution becomes crucial and there is no correct answer. It is simply an immersion of an experience and what you take away from the immersion of the experience. Yes, you most definitely can. You can call upon your own spirit realm to balance your chakras Anytime you wish. Your spirit realm are very close. They have moved right in around you. They are very close. They are providing you with all kinds of guidance. Coming and visiting me here is only one of them. But you need to understand that you are being greatly supported by the other realms here. There is love, abundant love. It is very deep. This love, if you can connect to it, it will help you heal. So it's just a matter of you having faith and trusting. And also the gift of intuition. 
spend some time understanding what intuition means and what it means to you. And if you can hear that quiet voice inside you that is your intuition, then be guided by that, please. But I'm going to ask you not to be hard on yourself. I would like you to treat yourself as the source greatness that you are. You are honoured. You are here on this planet. You chose it and this is a journey that you also chose. Please take back control. You have free will. Remember that. And I send you love and blessings, my friend. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. We have another question from Mike, and he says, Hello, Alma Talk. It's nice to meet you. My question today is the other night I received a head injury. What significance does that bring into my life, and how does it affect me? Mm, a head injury. In what way was the injury imposed? Is he available? Um, yes, he's typing on the side. He says parachuting incident. Ah, yes. Yes, my friend. Yes, you know this. You were lucky. As I referenced to you earlier, there are things, events that humans reach for, they're just not built for. The thrill is exhilarating, yes, of course. And it's often seen that humans become addicted to the adrenaline rush of these ideas. I will not sit in judgment of any of that because you all have free will. That is fine. I am sorry that he was injured and the head injury in particular. I wish for him to be very, very careful. Now, on the spiritual level, it means that he is actually creating a diversion for himself. The actual injury to the head from such a vast leap of faith to end in an injury like that, it means his imagery that is going on in his conscious mind, his subconscious mind, I'll bring you back again to the unconscious mind here. They are all active in this experience. He needs to be mindful that what he is gathering up here is safe. It is completely safe. There is no way that anything negative can reach him, that he is all about at this point how to heal himself and also learn from this experience. When it is the head, it is also it is a very significant sign that things need to be reviewed. This is where the structure of your entire existence begins. It's around the head. So yes, I'm going to say be careful, of course. This is obvious. If he tends to be a bit reckless, please cease that. This is important. This does not need to accelerate and it does not need to elevate. This injury needs to simply heal itself and then literally, literally be mindful. This is about belief systems, thought patterns. It, in, it invokes all kinds of messages. Again, it's a public deliverance, so it is difficult to actually deliver specifics. But I cannot stress enough how important it is when there is a head injury and where there is no permanent injury, take heed, my friend, take heed. Remember, nothing is a coincidence. Does that answer the question? I believe it does. 
Thank you so much, Alma Talk. You're now welcome. we have Michelle who just joined us and would love to speak with you. Yes. Greetings, Alma Talk. Hello, how are you? I have missed you. Yes, yes, it's lovely to hear your voice. Oh, it's great to hear you as well. Um, so I just wanted to you know, send you my love, but also I wanted to thank you for all the work we've done together and how when I followed your directions, all was well. I just wanted to let you know. And um, uh, I seem to have created, um, in at least not in my conscious mind, but in my subconscious, <laughs> um, a firestorm right now for myself. And I just wondered if you had any message you'd like to give me pertaining to upcoming things. Yes. Or where I am now. Yes. Yes. You please the fire in the sun. You will not be able to receive clarity while you are clouded by flame. So please douse the fire as best you can. You are well educated on how to do this. Mm -hmm. Please proceed to do that and then make decisions. I've already made decisions. <laughs> So, yes, I'm moving and just like it just sprung up on me. So, yes, um, very good. Just remember, my friend, where there is fire, smoke. take care. Okay. Yes, thank you so much. Much love to you. You're welcome. Much love, my friend. Well, that's wonderful. And now, Elma, talk. Can we please ask Kim if she needs a drink? I'm sure she does after all this time. Thank you, yes. One moment. Okay, can we check on Kim? How is she? Would she like to change or would you like to continue? I'm not sure how much time you have with us today. That is fine. It is your choice. Okay. Well, why don't we try a different entity now? And thank you so much, Alma Talk, for coming. And maybe you can give us a blessing before you leave. Yes. Yes. I will ask from the greatness of source to bestow upon you all the wisdom of the greatness that each of you are and the power that each of you hold to heal each other, to love each other, to know each other and to seek unity, not separation. Forever treasure your connection and remember you are important parts of an amazing construct called Source. Your abilities are vast. You are all moving forward, which is all that is required of you as a three-dimensional human. So whatever your belief system, the Creator, Source, God, may they bless you all with love, joy, wisdom, and bliss. Amen. Oh, thank you so much. Amen. Namaste. Namaste. I shall return to you. Okay. How are you, Kim? Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm a bit thirsty. Well, I was thinking you might need another drink. You didn't drink a lot there. <laughs> I want to keep you hydrated. 
We know Alma Talk dries you out. I know, it's amazing every time. <laughs> okay, okay. I've I judged better. <laughs> the time that we're bringing someone else, yeah? Yeah, if you, if you still feel like it. How are you feeling? Yeah, yeah so. We've got plenty fine. of energy left. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's just I have my little magic selection way queuing who's going to come because <laughs> uh, I know there's a couple. Okay, perfect. I'm kind of excited. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping Clancy shows up today. <laughs> I like Clancy. She's she's wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, she's available. Yeah. Oh, how wonderful. Bring her through. Okay. I've actually heard some chatter in my head. Maybe that's why from her. <laughs> okay. See you all soon. All right. Thank you, Kim. Hey y'all. Well, hello, Clancy. How are you? Just dandy. How are you? Oh, wonderful. It's wonderful to hear you today. I've missed you. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, yes. Yeah, anytime. Can I help? Oh, yes. I'd like to know if you have any messages for us today. Uh, not really, but... <laughs> I will, I will say something about what's going on with the whole grass stuff. Okay. Want to hear about that? Yeah? Want to know some stuff about that? Sure. Yeah, sure. They're working on it. This compound thing that was going on. Okay. It's all been worked out. And thankfully... Everyone was on the ball. And they all worked it all out real fast. And things are going to come together again. And things will settle. The communications will be reestablished. Most of them have already. It's just a matter of time before they get go ahead to continue. Oh, that's wonderful news. I know. I would love yeah. to go to the colony where you're at and meet with you. Uh, oh, we with love you. it when you can come up. We love it. Oh, it's wonderful. We miss you guys when you can't come up. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Can, I, can I ask a request for that? To come up and, sure. and visit with you? Sure. Oh, I have wonderful. to make it a timeline. I'm not actually working, though. But that's okay. You can always come in for a scan or something. Oh, we can go and eat something or something like that. Oh, Hands sure. Up. Just hang out. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. I would really enjoy that. Okay. Yeah. Are you are you available for some questions at this time? Yeah, why not? I might not oh, be able that's... to say much, but I answer what I can. Okay, perfect. Well, Sarah is waiting here for to talk to you, if that's okay. Yeah, I remember Sarah. Okay. Hi, can Clancy, can you hear me? Hi, Sarah. Hi, Hi. how are you? I'm great. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, it's it's been a little uh, strange down here on Earth, uh, energetically. Yeah, like, that's the perspective. <laughs> it's like I at the moment I'm feeling very dizzy, very like energetically. Oh. It's like heat pulsating. Saddle paddle. Huh. Paddle. Saddle pedal? Saddle pedal, yeah. Uh, what what's happening, girl? Why are you dizzy? It's the energies, I tell you. I, I I barely have enough energy to stay awake sometimes. 
Like I have to sleep all day, it seems. Like what in the world? (laughs) Ah, you're sleeping a lot, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ah, just sleep it off. Whatever it is, just sleep it off. Because you know what, you guys? You have the added benefit of us up here. So when something's really going a little bit awry, then I kind of can't get a little bit of insight, and I can't say too much about that. But anyway, in your case, Sarah, just rest, my friend, because there is a time coming up where you're going to be real busy when everything's all working back together again, okay? Okay. Well, I keep telling myself because that's what, you know, the energies are ramping up to do after June, but... You just preparing. Know. Yeah, you just preparing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of you that'll be going through this as the time gets nearer when you're all gonna be needed again. Mm-hmm. Mm. And the energies around you, they're just telling you that the time is coming. Don't worry about them. They they just give you a half a hand. That's all. So just sleep. Know that there's a reason, and it'll come. It'll come. Okay. There so, the, yeah, I understand, but the 3D things just don't get done. Who wants to do those anyway? <laughs> but hey, you know, you know, it, it's like you made the choice to get there, and, and I made the choice to get here. And don't ask me how I did that, but I did, and I'm here. But hey, you know, just make it all work, girl. As long as it's working, as long as it's all ticking over. You know what? You want to know how to do things efficiently? You know what you do? You talk to a lazy person. A lazy person who's got all their stuff in a row. Find one of them. They'll tell you how to do things easy, really easy. And all, you get more energy, and it'll be real good. Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I love you. Love you, too. <laughs> well, Hello. I'd like to add, I love you, too, and introduce Dan next. <laughs> there you go, Dan. Hey, y'all. Hello, Clancy. Thank you, Valerie. Hello, Clancy, 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 Clancy. Hello, Dan. Dan the man. How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I know that we're uh, doing a lot of things together quite often. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I don't need... Really? Why do you have your eye on me? Why I got my eye on you? Yeah, I know, but I want to hear you say What's it. What's about? No. <laughs> I got my eye on you, and you know why. Okay, I know why, but I wanted to hear you say why. Yeah, well, why? It's because we're working together. Well, I know we are. That's why I wanted to ask you a question. Um, Our friend Christina here has an issue that I may require your assistance on here very shortly, and so I wanted to make arrangements for uh, Colony 2 to make a way for her. Would that be all right? Sure. There'll be a bit of a... Oh, no. no. Yeah, yeah, see? There will be a bit of a delay in time. Do what you can in the meantime before we can work on her up here. Okay, all right, that will work. That's kind of another thing I was wondering about. Okay, awesome. Um, well, good. Colony 2 is the medical colony. It's one where a lot of the healing and scans and things are done where people deal with some physical issues sure even though colony 2 is well I'm trying to just let everybody know a little bit about colony 2 that it's fourth dimensional some of the things that happen there don't always translate well into 3D and then I can assist with the 3D stuff that's kind of the deal that's going on so if people were wondering kinda how that works that's kinda how that works Um. Clancy, do you have anything, um, any other messages for the group as a whole? I know a lot of people were going through this sickness where we lost our ground with Earth and we were all trying to get caught back up again and all of those kinds of things. Do you have any uh, 
uh, information and messages that you can share about uh, energies and things coming up or, or you know the best way to keep hanging on <laughs> for for those that are still having a little bit of the uh, the breathing issues and, and things yeah sure well it's like I said to Sarah it's like listen to your bodies right now because only you who can understand who I am what I do you need to also understand the timing is important and you guys are going to need to be ready so if you're getting sleepy like Sarah or you're getting hungry for certain things or you want to be in a certain place you might want to be in the sun or at the beach go ahead and do it guys because it's all about what's coming because when this stuff up here gets worked out it's going to be real important. We're going to need you guys. So, yeah. That's what we're sitting back right now. And we're waiting for everything to be prepared. And everything to be put back into place. And then to get the go-ahead. And that ain't going to happen until it's 100% safe. So, that's the only message I want to give you all. Just to say, be patient. You can sure reach out. We will reach back if we can. We can only do what we can do right now. Don't think we've forgotten about you all not. Love you all. We're all doing the very best that we can. All of us. All the colonies. All working together as best we can. Is that okay? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Clancy. And now uh, we have a question from Jasmina if she's prepared. Yes, thank you. Um, hello. Uh, can, do you remember? Do you know me from the colonies? Jasmina, yeah. Yes. Jasmina, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yes, go. So, can you tell me something? What do I do there? When you come to. What? When you come to colony two, or when yeah. you go to the. Yes. Oh, when you come to Colony 2, we're looking at DNA. When you guys come up, a lot of the time, we're looking at your DNA that you have. And also, what dormant DNA you have, and what's been activated, and then what infusions you want, and when and why and how. And there's a regular keeping system, and sometimes, because we need human help up here sometimes. We just need to be 3D. So sometimes we'll bring one of you up on invitation, see if you can come up and just help us out with playing paperwork stuff. And that's what it seemed like to you guys. Like just paper paperwork. But it's actually all about keeping records and keeping track of you all, making sure you're all okay. So Jasmine, when you come up, there's been times when you've actually helped out with the record keeping situation. So you actually do know by your mind knows about what's going on on the house of some of the other members and they're the ones that you're going to feel real connected with because they're the only ones that you'll be allowed to remember. So you have some information on some of your friends that have been up which are very respectful and that's one of the reasons why it's shared with you. So colony too when you're coming up and you're with us up there yeah you help it out you're doing whatever it is we need to get done, honey. Okay, thank you. I think, I think I understood. Uh, but I have another question. Just a, just a, um, uh, Jim uh, told me that I had some kind of a course there sometime. Uh, it was like some kind of a acting, psychology, uh, spirituality course. Can, can you talk about this? Yeah, yeah but yeah, just to yeah. know, we don't know what's going on. Oh. on. We don't normally do that on too. Doesn't mean it hadn't happened. Yeah. Happen. Uh, you know, I mean, we know it. 
No, I don't know. I don't know because mm -hmm. I want to do something, uh, something like this here, and I was I was thinking if you have some kind of uh, tips or something like that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, next time you come up, girl, I want you to go to Colony Five, spend some time on Five, and then come back, come back, come back and spend some time on Two. So just make that just request. Make that okay. I'll let the girl know. Yeah, okay. sure. Yeah, sure. We can help you out with learning some stuff up here so that you can do it down there. That's fine. Okay, that's good. Do you have some kind of a message for me or something like that? Yeah. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for all you do because you really do help out. So don't doubt it, okay? Well, well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, does anyone else have any questions or am I missing anyone? If not, then I guess we'll we will say goodbye to Clancy. We love her so much. Um, I love you all too. Are there any final messages from you, Clancy, or did you say all you needed to? Well, we still have one oh, question. I'm sorry. From... I'm sorry. We got a question popping in here. <laughs> Omran? It's okay. It's okay. Well, well, my question is about the love. I want I want to know how we can use use love to connect to each other's hearts. How we can connect to each other's, um, uh, yeah, more and better, faster. Like, if I'm if I want to know someone else and connect to this this person, how can I use love to connect to to this person? And and what are the power the power of love and the the power of the heart? If you could tell us about these things we we could use in our ascension, it would be great. Yeah. Dang boy. You single? <laughs> oh yeah, I am so a little. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Woof. Woof. Okay. Listen to me, my friend. <laughs> you got it all going on. Okay? Alright? Now I'm telling yeah. you, and I look it down there at you, my friend. Just put yourself out there. Whoa, life will show you what hot energy does. You go around talking words like that to ladies. Oh, you teach them a few things too, you know. Hey, anyway, okay, let's be serious. I'm talking about the, <laughs> the hot energy and the hot space and all that stuff. Yeah, it's real important. And one of the real good ways to get used to doing that is to actually visualize it. If you visualize the energy moving from your heart to another, and there's also another thing you can do, and it's a body language thing that you can do as a human. And when you come from your heart and you just touch it like that, you just touch it like that, and you say, Baby, I love you. Or you can say, I love you, mate. Okay? All right, that was the two. Got that one there. But you just got to yeah. do it in that way. It's an energy you just got to tap into. It's like any other energy. It's like the energy of hate. Mm. Drop that one off. Don't need that one. But the energy of love, you're so on track, boy. You keep going on. And please keep talking about the way that you are because you got a lot to teach a lot of people. Yes, yes. This could be something that one of the other one of the other colleagues might want to talk to you about sometime. Not really my specialty since I'm human up here. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess that, that works. Dig with yeah. it, okay? Yes, Ooh. thank you, Fancy. Thank you. <laughs> well. <laughs> okay, Clancy, we have another member, Rowie, who would love to speak with you. I know, Rowie. 
Hi, Rowie. Hey, Clancy. Hey there. You kind of actually answered my question. Um, I was going to ask how you got there, how you, uh, how you came to be on Colony Two, what the process mm -hmm. was. Um, yeah. I'm intrigued. Really am. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, basically, not the first day. They left me here for about seven years. Seven years on the planet Earth. Because the first seven years is where you develop most of your humanity and your your human kind type behaviors. And so when I was seven and I was having interactions with all the aliens and even some spirit, I knew that I was going to be coming up here. And I also knew I wasn't to say anything about it. And I actually really was looking forward to it because I was feeling real lonely when I was down there. So then what they did was that they made a clone. They actually made a clone. Perfect clone. And they just swapped us over. And I was real glad that because I knew I was supposed to be coming up. And so that's all that happened. And since then, the clone has been just doing things that... I would probably have done if I'd stayed there. That's it. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, you can expand on it a little bit more if you wish, or um, what was the process of you, like, did you wake up one day and you were at the colonies and that was it, or was there, no. like, an interview? Or... No, they can't got me. Uh, like it, it was all like. Too human. Can you say that again? I said, am I thinking in too human terms of, of was, the process? It was very human. It was that simple. It was a swap over. And it was actually done with the aliens that came to get me. It was that simple. There was two of them, and they came down, and I'd seen them before. I knew who they were. And when it was time, they just made the change, and I left behind some love for the family that I had. I couldn't do something never. Huh? And how old were you at that time? Seven. Seven, Seven years so old. So, what about your parents? What happens with your parents, and um, how did they? They don't know any different. They don't know. So they, they got still think you're missing. Do huh? they still think you're missing? No, no, the clone is there. The clone is there. The clone of me. When they took me, they left the clone of me. When I was seven. Oh, I see. Yeah. So roughly how many clones are on the planet Earth from Gert Fickney right now? Uh, not many. Not many at all. Probably five. And from other groups? Is there a rough estimation? Not really. It's not really something I'm supposed to talk about. That I can't say. It, it, it's it's not real common. I mean, I'm I'm just I'm just so. I mean, it opens up so many more questions to me about the clones and. Um, yeah. How that works. I Maybe know. that would be for a, another session. So I'll just, I'll just pass it on to somebody else and thank you for your interaction, Clancy. Sure. Okay. Love to you. What's up? Okay, Clancy, we have another question for you from Tiger Tiger Eye. And the question is How should I work with my negative impulses? I get angry very easily, and I do things I regret later. Hmm. That's a bit sad, really. Might be something that they might want to consider an infusion. Do you know if they've done that? Can that answer? Um, let's see. Tiger, can you answer that in chat, please? I can't speak today, so we'll do it That's like that. That's okay. That's okay. Say hi. Uh, the question was, 
Can you repeat your question, please, for him or her? My question? Yes, please. Oh, what, what is his question? She's <laughs> asking to repeat if you've... If, if, you asked Tiger if they've had any infusions, and Tiger was confused about what an infusion is. Ah, not, even, not even familiar with the DNA infusion from another. They know, uh, no, yeah, no. So they, no, no idea. No. Totally, totally brand new to the whole concept. Yeah, I hear, I hear. Then absolutely not. There's, there's no need to even be considering that right now. It's something that maybe later she might want to look at. Yeah, and you're. It's already been said in this session. Anger is the expression of where you're not getting what you want. It really is that simple. If you can, you know, like chunk it down to little pieces and have a look at it and what's driving the anger and why you're so quick to get angry, usually means that there's something just under the surface. Uh, it's kind of like... I'm not really going to say this, but I'm going to say it. It's kind of like when you pass wind, right? It's just there, and then it's got to come out. So the anger, when you just flare up, even if you get to that point where you see that why anger, you out of control. Now, it's real good to think about this. Think about the times when you're actually looking at yourself. When you're doing this stuff, Move yourself outside of your body. Pretend that you are a camera up in the corner and you're watching yourself and the other person that you're angry at. And sometimes your anger is always going to be able to be diffused by another person if they understand how to diffuse it. It takes two to have a fight, right? So if one of you is going to be able to diffuse your anger by listening, by actively listening, that's what you call it, actively listening, and showing that you care, letting you have your say, and then that'll help you get down to what really is going on. And that's going to take practice. So when you're feeling angry, if you just want to say, look, I'm feeling angry and i got to get this shit out, and outside the person, just sit and listen. And just say, look, I just got to say what I got to say. Just Can you just sit and listen and then I'll give you your chance to speak. But I need to just be empty of all these feelings. And that will be a great start. Because what that will do is start to take the lid off. Once you take the lid off, you start to tip it out of the cup. Because it's more empty. You run out of anger. And you find what's underneath all the anger. When you find that, then you know what you're really working with and what you need to do to fix it. So anger in itself isn't really a bad thing. It's a sign that you need to be heard and you have something to say because you care about yourself. You just don't hurt anyone else, especially not physically. So to kind of give yourself some rules so that you're not calling bad names or things like that. And be honest about your anger. And also be honest as you just did and say that you do have an anger problem. So when you want to go and talk to someone about whatever you're angry about, then say to them, I've got an anger problem. And this is how I deal with it. I need to talk about this until I'm empty of it. Man, you can work it out. Does that help? Yes, he says he's got the idea, or she's got the idea. Thank you very much. Uh, listening to the anger is difficult. It's very fast, but going to try. Mm. So wonderful advice, Clancy. We really appreciate that. And we do have no, no Sam, who has a question as well, if that's okay. Sure. Okay, go ahead, Sam. Hello, Clancy. Hi. By the way, I love your accent. You make me laugh in a good way. Thank ah. you. 
Well, this whole thing's so good at it, but hey, you know what? It doesn't matter because it's a message that matters. <laughs> anyway, I got some question regarding vibration. Um, I seem to go into some kind of state of changes right now. My whole body vibrates, mostly from my hip down. It's, I feel like an internal vibration. I don't know what it is, but I know I'm getting a lot of downloads. Could you find that out for me or let me know what it is? Which leg is it? What's um, that? Both sides. Both sides? Yes. From the hips down over on the base of the spine, the vertics, where does it start? It's, it's from the hips down, but at the same time, um, there's like um, a movement in my back when I sit down in the car driving and it's like I feel like a snake just jiggling my body and I keep jiggling forward. Oh, okay. Are you keeping a lid on that there? Are you keeping that <laughs> tip in there? Or are you letting it move around? I let it move around and it, it just what? feels funny. Yeah. And where does it move to? Does it go down your legs? Um, the, the jiggle feel like um like a, a snake movement coming from my uh, tail up to my back, but the vibration feels from my hip down to my feet. Mm. You got two things going on there, my friend. Okay. There's a response. The vibration in the leg is a response to what's actually going on in your spine. Because they're all joined up and they all speak to each other. You know that, don't you? With your spinal column and your vertebrae and all that stuff and all your nerves, they're all connected to those areas, right? Yes. So what's happening in the hips is actually just a response to what's going on in your spine and the nerves around there. And your activity of energy going on around there, my friend. Okay. There's lots of names for this. Lots of names for this. It can actually be the beginning of some kind of spiritual shift. One of the things that it can be called is Kundalini. I don't know if you know much about that, but I'd ask you to go and have a look and see if any of it resonates with you. But also, it can simply be that you just need to have some work done on your back, my friend. But oh. be sure, be sure, and do both. Have a look at it medically, and then also look at the Kundalini idea. Okay. 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 And another question is. Uh, I'd like to request to uh, visit the colony if possible. Hmm. Of course, my friend. When we start bringing you up, yep, they'll bring you up. What was your name again? My name is Sam. I got it. Yep. All good, my friend. I'll okay. say you soon. Thank you, and I'll pass on to Mike. Love you. Love you, too. Okay. I believe we're going to start the blessings now. Do you have any blessings for us today, Clancy? I ain't real good at blessings. I'm sorry. Okay. I it's that. cool. Oh, I, I can do that. Just I love you all. Thanks for having me. That works. We love you all too. <laughs> hey, I see say, you. Say hello time. to everybody on Colony Two. I'm telling sure. you, I can't wait to meet them all. Sure, I'll let them know. It's exciting for everyone. I'll see you later. Okay, we'll see you later, Clancy. Can we bring Bye back Kim you. now? Sure. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Oh, welcome back, Kim. <laughs> Thank you so much for bringing Clancy to us today. <laughs> oh, she's so much fun. I just love her. Oh, good. <laughs> the accent is just, oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> she feels like she's getting out of a cage. It's like letting an animal loose out of a cage when she comes through. <laughs> what can I tell you after that session? They're saying Kim Delaney. <laughs> 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 That's an awesome I'm laughing idea. over here. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> oh, okay, god. Sarah, since you're hanging up there, uh, why don't you go ahead and start our blessings for us today? 
Okay. Hi, Will. Okay. Allow the energies to flow within you. Allow yourself to become one with it. Vibrate, vibrate to the higher energy. Vibrate through all parts of your being to your higher self, to source. Feel yourself filled with life, filled with light of source. You are one and all of it. Let it fill you up. Resonate with it. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much. Okay, Rowie, would you like to go next? Thank you, Valerie. I'd just like to take a moment and be aware of where you are right now and just give your thanks for the messages for the last two hours for all the people that have been here and allow that awareness to fill your body. Just allow that awareness to fill your 3D environment right now. And I'd like you to imagine to expand that environment and push it towards your auric reach and expand and fill that bubble. And just give that thanks and ask for more of the guidance to come in a beautiful and harmonic way. And with the resistance without the resistance so just let it flow in and imagine all those spheres connecting together and imagine the change that we create from connecting those spheres of influence that we have around the environment we have today that's all I have thank you namaste okay I'm seeing that Amran would like to give a blessing as well today, so let's have Amran on. Thank you for that, yeah. Shakti anaute ane, anate no ok tanahat na shena era, anake no otora na kana ena etz, anake to o. A enaka shanaka enaka nata eno to anestana nakata e o. Thank you, everyone. Love and light be upon you all and on your way. That was truly a blessing. Thank you, Amran. 
Is there anyone else who'd like to give a blessing, or can we wrap it up today? Okay, that seems to be it. Kim, I we want to thank you so much. Oh, you've just been absolutely wonderful today, Kim Louise. We uh, we love you, everyone. Hashtag love Kim Louise. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, uh, Dan, do you have any announcements today? Yeah, I'd just like to remind everybody that you can find Kim on Multiverse Channelings on Facebook and on Google Plus, and um, you can find her links also on Human Colony and uh, Hookalo TV, which can be found on Facebook amongst other places and uh, and things like that. You can always um, find us in several places. Anyway, uh, Human Colony is a channeling group. You know, we we meet uh, once a week here. Uh, for the Saturday webinar, there's also other conversations and things going on that happen on Google Plus and Facebook and other places. Um, we might be expanding the Facebook a little bit more here shortly, so stay tuned there. Um, for those who have been watching and have been fans for a while, we are going to have a uh, a meetup kind of uh, deal called Beyond Belief in Hot Springs, Arkansas, uh, the week of June 20th. Uh, that information can be found around on uh, on the Human Colony Facebook site and humancolony.org, and I believe Human Colony Ning as well. Uh, otherwise, um, ask in the YouTube channel here, and we can uh, send links to you that way and get you connected. If you're interested in that great event, we're going to have all kinds of activities and things and you'll be able to meet a bunch of us and uh, we'll be having healing sessions and channel sessions and all kinds of other things there and having a really great time. So if you're interested in that, we'll try to get that information to you. Just let us know somehow and we'll try to get it all worked out. But that's that's all I have for now unless anybody has anything else. Oh, I just had a quick question on the, on the get together there and I think it's Will's and he can answer this. Will any of that be on YouTube or or uh, streamed at all, Will? Let's see if my microphone works, does it? Yes. It sure yeah. does. Oh, awesomeness. Awesomeness to all of you today. Um, yes, you're, you're like a week ahead of the announcements of uh, things that are going to be online and available. We're going to rock it. We're going to have a, a totally awesome time. We're going to get there on Friday at some time. So if you want to show up Friday, totally cool. So, um, June 17th, the retreat actually starts on Saturday morning. We'll do the uh, Saturday morning webinar live from Hot Springs. And Monday is the summer solstice, and we will be rocking the summer solstice and creating creating a whole bunch of awesomeness. On uh, I'm chuckling because I'm I'm reading the side chat as well. We're going to be uh, doing some awesome stuff on the summer solstice. And the nearest airport is Little Rock, Arkansas, as uh, Roy was asking. But we're also getting a convoy going from Austin, so if it's cheaper for you to fly to Austin and then you can drive with us, that would that would rock it. Oh, that's wonderful. It's, uh, it sounds like a great event. If anyone can make it, uh, make sure that you do. It will be one not to be missed with so much to learn and, and grow from um, with a great bunch of people. Um, you will feel like family there. There's no doubt in my mind. Okay, well, um, I guess we'll wrap it up then. We want to thank you again, Kim Louise, and everyone who joined us on YouTube and joined us in the group. Make sure to join us again next week. I'm not sure who will be channeling, but I'm sure it'll be fun. So please join be, us. It will be Jim Channeling next oh, week. There you already, go. It'll be Kim and Sabrina then. Yeah. That's good because okay. it will be really disappointing for me to fly to Rochester and Jim not channel so I can't sit next to him. So <laughs> I'll be sitting right next to him next week. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right. Namaste, so everyone. Have a great day. Yep. Thank you, everybody. See you all next week.